Hi, everyone. My name is Mike Weaver. I'm one of the product owners here at Quadratech. I oversee our PST migration solutions, and I'm here with Milan from our delivery team to talk about a new topic today. How are you, Milan? I'm doing all right. What about you? Ah, doing well. It's a rainy day here in London and cold as, a, as we go into autumn here. But uh, it's been quite busy, though, with uh, everything going on, obviously, with the pandemic. But some of our projects have really gotten quite busy. Yeah, that's that's correct. I can see that a, a lot with the with the users and customers, like they're moving forward, and they will try to move forward, but there are some obstacles currently. Yeah. So why don't we talk about uh, today's topic, which is some of the challenges with PST migrations, uh, particularly with the changes that have happened with the COVID nineteen pandemic and remote working. Um, what are you seeing? So obviously, we've had a lot of Office 365 adoption over the years, and now people are, are working remote. What are we seeing uh, really a big change in how organizations access Office 365 from remote workstations? So the biggest change is that most of the users in the organization working remotely from home, which they've uh, never been used to because they work from offices. Now, as the most of the offices are closed or customers uh, decide to close them, or minimize the visiting of the offices, users working from home. Now all the users need to access the Office 365 and this work become the problem with the PST migration. The PST migrations or, or the PSTs that are centralized on the uh, user workstations. And I think one of the issues, Milan, is these PSTs are both back in the office on their desktop as well as home with them, correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, there is no problem with the PST or the net on the network shares because those can be accessible e easily. The problem are on the, the direct desktop or the users uh, home laptops or home desktops. And you mentioned earlier the challenge where a lot of organizations weren't prepared for this. So, you know, we had always remote working or organizations set up for remote working. But I think it's the amount of users where, you know, we're seeing capacity issues. I think you mentioned some of the projects. Yes, yes, that's uh this was one of the uh, the problems uh, organizations uh, uh, organization thought, thought that they, they will start a PST migration not normal users coming to office everything is normal now they need to uh, everything changes this year and they still want to approach this migration but they are not sure if they can do it because of uh, user re working remotely what, it, uh, what the issue is when the user works remotely, in order to access the uh, company network, they need to log to VPN. Now, this uh, well, this can be the blocking issue for a customer as the bandwidth over the VPN can kill the, uh, or the connection over the VPN can kill the bandwidth. And I mean, I think what's what a lot of people lose track of is these files are quite large. So, you know, you take the capacity problem of, you know, you've got, the, the system running at near capacity and now you're going to try to centralize this data that that together can be a really large challenge. Yes, of course, that's uh, that's a challenge for customers as you know, from the user's perspective, most of the users prefer to keep all the PSTs on their laptops close to them. Now, how to, uh, how to centralize those PST to the, some servers and then proceed them to Office 365. That's the big challenge. While at the same time also getting their PSCs that are locked away in their office, uh, you know, <laughs> together uh, so that you actually get access to everything. So why don't we talk? So Microsoft released some split tunneling options for accessing Office 365. So certainly companies have had uh, the ability to do what's called VPN split tunneling. So uh, I, I, when I need to go to the company network or all my traffic, I can force through the VPN. But then there's certain approved services like Office 365 that can go direct. So that bypasses a VPN and, and particularly in times when there's high capacity. But in terms of PST projects, what are we seeing in companies trying to work within these restrictions as well? With the current situation of the user working from home, uh, in order to access the company network, they need to use VPN. And they're using it for accessing some files on network shares or co company files. But uh, user can still use Office 365 access. And with the split tunneling, they don't need to go through uh, company network, but access it directly as the split tunneling allows you to you know, di divide the internal and external connections. So for organizations where they weren't designed to have 100% of their users remote, this has been a pretty big impact. 
Oh uh, yes, de definitely. You know, they were not used to it, and now they they need to adapt quickly. Absolutely. So, in regards to a PST project and and trying to centralize PSTs, are we seeing companies leverage this option more? Oh yes, they they were. Um, when the COVID situation started and everything goes to lo lockdown, the uh, company was, was struggling, like, uh, how are we going to keep this PST migration live? How we, uh, if we're going, are we going to uh, postpone it? Or is there an option? And fortunately, there, there is, and that's uh, the split tunneling. When they, uh, and they, they decide to use this option, many, uh, many customers utilize it because they can continue migration. So conceptually, that allows the user to download the files once they're migrated again inside their OST or, or access Office 365 outside the VPN. How are clients leveraging the migration using this technology or this this concept? Uh, so as we can, uh, uh, our tool, PST Fly, that can be hosted in Azure. And due to that, we can use sp split tunneling. So users can um, uh, migrate over the VPN or over the external net network, so local internet. Then. And that's thanks to uh, split tunneling because we, we can host, uh, as the PST file is hosted in Azure, it can has uh, two different IPs, one internal, one external, and customers can uh, you, or use it either they, if they are on a company network or, or external network. They can still access the core server and proceed with the migration or centralize so the PST files. So that allows us to migrate the PSTs that are locked away inside the network, migrate those uh, PSTs, and then migrate the remote ones without adding to the VPN. Exactly. That's correct. Great. And have we seen, um, I, I know on the, on the pre-sales side, we've seen a lot of uptick and in interest in people trying to remediate PSTs, particularly for those files that are locked away. Um, are you seeing in the implementation that this is becoming a really popular option? Oh yes, this is very popular option, and I think uh, even after the COVID situation will uh, will will pass, this this should be still a very popular uh, option for the larger customers that have uh, you know users around the world. With this, we can migrate even faster because in many situations there are users which are working still remotely. Or maybe after the COVID situation, they will d decide to uh, uh, stay at home and work remotely. And uh, not all the users are required to log VPN daily, so we can still migrate to such a situation. You know, it's interesting because I know when we originally designed the Azure hosting option, that was for global companies and, you know, being able to put spokes wherever the users were. So, and, and it's interesting now, though, we're, we're reusing it for this current situation <laughs> to, to get through it. So it's good to see the technology shifting and, and keeping up with the demand. Yeah, we adapt really quickly to it. And uh, fortunately, the setup is not very hard. So it's a pleasure surprise for the customers that we can actually do it in such a way. Absolutely. Well, Juan, thanks for joining today and talking to us about the shift in these projects and what we're seeing live in the production world here. Thank you very much.